Good morning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the How to Nurture Female Leadership and Inclusivity in Our Affiliates, a case study of Wikimedia and Wikimedia. I think we'll wait for about a minute to get some more people into the room, and then we'll kick off the conversations. This session will specifically be a panel discussion, so it will be some female leaders from our communities doing amazing work, sharing their experiences, and um, um, and some of the activities that they've been doing in their communities. Uh, we want to also get some more females into the room so we could actually throw it out there for other leaders, uh, female leaders in the communities that are doing some amazing work to share their experiences as well. And we have uh, some people out there calling people into the room, so we're going to live for just about a minute before we start. Thank you. We're wondering why is it that often we'll be there's a month sitting here. Sometimes when we hear inclusivity for Jenna, we forget men, but men can also be there to push our problems. So I'm here to support my name. Thank you. So whilst we wait for people to step into the room, I'll ask the ladies on the panel to introduce themselves. Uh, they tell us where they're from and maybe share one or two things about some of the work that they've been doing in their communities. So, Carol, please start for us. Um, good morning. My name is Carol from Nairobi, Kenya. I co-lead the Wikimedia Communities group and I champion gender gap on Wikipedia and also I love championing uh, free open knowledge. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Terry Boke. I am from the Wikimedia Youth Group in Kenya and um, I'm happy to be here to have this discussion with you. Hello everyone. My name is Harriet Bayo from Ghana Global Open Initiative Foundation. And what we do is train you to gain some form of skills um, through volunteering. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Candy Trisha Kosiwe and I am a Wikimedia from Botswana. I am a former project facilitator with Wikidabs Women and I'm also a project lead back in my country as well. Yeah. Good morning. My name is Mene Kabinti. Um, I'm a Wikimedian for four years now. I wear many hats, but one of the hats that I wear that um, I'm wearing on this stage today is that uh, co-founder of the Wikimedia User Group uh, Kenya. I'm passionate about female leadership, empowering women not just to be seen or just to fill in the, 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 the gender mark, but also to see their impact being made and I think that's why we're here to have this conversation and see how we can make uh, female leadership or female inclusion impactful in our communities, get to hear um, uh, the unique challenges and opportunities that um, females in the, in the movement have and maybe how we can help advance that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we will begin now. Uh, this first question that I have is to the Kenyan team. And um, for me, it's intriguing to hear that there's an all-female co-founded user group in Africa. Honestly, I've never heard that for the 12 years that I've been here. And so being the first to create something on the continent like that, my question is, what did you do and how did you get there? So the Kenyan team. Anyone wants to go first? Give me here. So, um, how I, I joined this uh, movement, 
I joined it at a regional uh, conference, the East Africa Strategy Summit in Kampala. And I remember I joined also, I got that opportunity to join because the, the call that I saw, they were asking for females who had an experience in journalism to join that summit from Kenya. It was just a random thing shared in a WhatsApp group that I was on. And I remember, uh, fast forward, if somebody had not like made that space and just crafted it to ensure it was just sectioned, or rather they had like seats allocated for females, I probably would. Is there? Okay, I probably would never have um, uh, gotten into that room. And then fast forward, that was now Kampala. I learned there's a movement, but at the same time. Uh, I also felt like underprivileged that we were there in that great summit with Africans from all over the continent. But then there was no, Kenya is the only um, uh, country that didn't have a community at the time. So I took it upon myself to find out from the other leaders that were there, the Ugandan <laughs> affiliates and leaders. Alice Douglas, I know Felix, you are also there. Um, yeah, so I took it upon myself to really engage um, and find out how can we start a community. I learned that there used to be an, um, an, an affiliate actually in Kenya at some point that was disbanded, but then I said, okay, we don't even know, it's a big country, we don't know um, uh, why the other thing was disbanded, neither what the, what they are any any of those people in that room? So I was like, once I go back, I met all the, also two other Kenyans in that uh, East Africa Strategy Summit. So I was like, once we go back, how can we regroup and just make this space more inclusive? But then for me again, because of the passion of female leadership, I was also very intentional on uh, making sure that it's ladies, females who are also starting it. So I remember one of the people I had tapped into for insights and, and, and knowledge is um, Alice uh, from Wikimedia User Group Uganda. So she does the AFLIA trainings and all. And then she had trained um, some people, including Carol. And then she said there's actually some Kenyans who have engaged in this. And these are some of the outstanding ones that actually you could get involved with and integrate them in your community. And the rest is history or present. The rest is now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Carol, would you mind sharing uh, the point of view on that journey as well? Um, my journey is quite interesting. Um, COVID came. I always say COVID uh, brought me Wikipedia. And I was home, everything was shut in Nairobi. And um, I participated in the AFLIA um, conversations. And that's how I saw the call to train librarians uh, on how to edit and introduce them to Wikipedia. And that is how my journey started. That's how I met Alice from user group Uganda. And uh, it's interesting that somebody from another country made me get connected to Winnie so that we can champion um, free knowledge uh, on Wikipedia. And uh, it's been a very interesting journey trying to navigate the space and trying to come up with a community in Kenya. And here we are. I think two years later, we are still um, doing what we can. And it's really quite exciting to see the female leadership and giving people roles in the community to, to do something, yeah. Terry? Um, I would love to take the next question because uh, Carol and Winnie are actually the champions of uh, our user groups. Right, that being said, <clears throat> how do you empower women to join your community? And how difficult or how easy has it been for you trying to mobilize women to set up your own community together? I am happy to share about um, how women in my community are empowered 
to contribute in the wiki spaces. I am a product of mentorship, courtesy of Winnie Kabinti, who was actually uh, talking about open knowledge, free knowledge, and I got interested to know more about all this that um, she kept sharing on social media. So my joining of, uh, into the Wikimedia space was um, inspired by the work that Winnie Kabinti was sharing on social media. And I remember I have a YouTube channel where I talk about change makers and people who create change in their communities. And I was interviewing her about it. And then from that moment is when I actually became actively involved in the Wiki spaces. So how they empower women uh, women like me, is that um, in a number of projects in the uh, Wikimedia community, the group in Kenya, I have taken part in uh, managing the social media page uh, for the group. And when I'm not contributing on that page, it's dormant. It's not like we don't have men in, in our user group, we do. But uh, also, when we are doing content in terms of video, in terms of photography, I'm always taking charge. Uh, graphic designing, even in the, in, during the Wikipedia Act 20, I was in the organizing committee together with Felix, working behind the scenes. And you know, it gives you so much joy when you see your work being you know, put out there, and yet you've been working behind the scenes. And also, a number of us women in Kenya uh, who belong in the user group are, are mothers. I am also a mother. But, um, most times you find that we have so much on our on, on our hands and sometimes we don't have even the time to be able to log into Wikipedia and contribute. But um, Wiki uh, community has made it possible for us to contribute because they give us child care. Uh, for example, during Wikimania we get child uh, support which enables a lot of us to contribute. And also when we have campaigns in, in Kenya, most of uh, the women are encouraged to take up roles, for example, admin roles and also organizing the event. So women are always shining and that is uh, how we empower each other. Maybe Carol can talk more? Uh, I think also something else that we try to do, um, we are night calls. <laughs> we, we end up holding uh, most of our meetings way past when our babies are asleep. So that is one of the things we have tried to accommodate each other. From 9 p.m. in Nairobi, uh, we'll be meeting with Winnie and the following day the kids are supposed to do in school. So we have tried our best to be inclusive and also um, take up our lunchtime hours to train more women and encourage them that, that the space is there for them, they can make it and um, to just being there and giving them time to learn, uh, no matter how long it takes to know how to put a, a photo on Wikipedia to upload on Commons uh, and to create a, a quote on Wikiquote, which I really love doing. So I use also my strength on what I use to teach uh, more women on Wikispace. So Kandi, how has the story been like in Botswana? How are you empowering women? On this movement, what are you doing to bring this kind of woman to an uh, autonomous group? Uh, thank you, Felix, for the question. So, for me, uh, where this all started was I was back in university where I was on competition at Masters on Wikipedia Challenge, and I've always been very curious about being in the digital space, and that's how I, uh, I became second runner up for that competition uh, for Wikipedia. So, fast track. A couple of years later, where I think nothing happened in between, I was quite inactive. Fast track to 2019, uh, I saw uh, one of uh, I'll say Alan Florence actually had a Wikilabs Africa 
uh, competition running and I was interested to join that webinar and from there on they actually encouraged me to actually uh, apply for a grant and actually do one of the uh, projects back home. Um, they, from there on I did that and it went quite well. So there's a there's a really big difference between um, projects that are all back home. When it's a photographic contest you find probably let's say 80% of the um, ratio is mainly male, um, 20% is female. And then when we do like Wiki Loves Women, it's mainly, um, that is Wiki Code or Wikipedia articles, it's mainly, I'll say 70%, it's female. And with the passion that I've always had for myself, um, I always loved working with women, and hence for me also being, having that background of actually being in connection with my performance, I have I had the opportunity to work with them, um, being a project facilitator and actually working with Carol and Terry, um, where I was actually helping and facilitating them with the focus group, uh, where we would communicate how to actually um, mentor these women to actually be champions and be women who can actually um, have these events and champion having Wikipedia events in their countries. So we have built yeah, with that, I've, I've always been passionate and discovered I should take this through with my community. Even further on, I'm still doing that. And still to, till date, my community, we still have more women, which is really interesting, um, which is 70% of um, 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 ratio of women um, who are really interested on contributing on Wikipedia. So, I, I, I feel like it's a natural thing. It's so weird that we don't have so much bell, but um, yeah, that, that's the case back then. <laughs> I don't think it's weird at all, it's important. Um, can you share more on your experience in Yemen? Yes, so um, I actually joined the movement through the Wiki Loves Women um, Initiative, and this was through an invitation of my sister, and I turned up there and kept being present just because I wanted to be there and then see what's going on. I probably didn't have a goal, but just being present. And so for our community, we just encourage everyone, be present. You don't have anything to say, just sit there. You don't know when something was passed. And the other thing that um, made me continue was the fact that I just saw the camera and some, I took a picture. I said, the camera is good. I am not a good photographer. But I took a picture and someone said, oh, you're a very good photographer. And that's part of the interest of photography. So I learned from that and I was like, well, someone did something very good. Just tell the person you did well in this. And the person will be tempted to learn more about that field. That field. So we encourage our participants, you are good here, do this. We had an event for Parliament of Ghana and mostly men participated in this contest. So we felt that we have to do something about this and we encourage the women. We're like, the men are taking all their awards here, they are doing this, we can challenge them, let's tell them we can do this. And surprisingly, the next contest, we had most of the women winning this. And what we did further was to tell them that you are able to um, do this on your own. How about you teach someone? And so we entrusted them with a volunteer, a newbie, so that they will be the one to kind of guide this person. And going on, we started delegating um, tax, minor tax for our community members, so they feel part of the community, they are not left out, and also they are gaining something and um, going on from there. So that's how it has been uh, with that. Wow. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, I also wanted to add on to that point, like how um, we make this space more meaningful for women, because I think it's not always about even as when you say we want that space at the table, it's never about having it, but it's about what are you doing in there? What are you bringing on the table? What impact are you making? So I think um, one of the things that I've seen work as far as making this space more meaningful than maybe other communities um, could also have especially the emerging ones, is um, always doing a need analysis of your community members, understanding the demographic, 
their needs, their professional development uh, needs and all, then giving them more. I think as uh, Mariana likes to say this, uh, the CEO of the foundation, sometimes as we comedians, we have to look also what's there in the world, beyond our editor thoughts, beyond what's, what are the things happening in the world. So I remember like, um, uh, for, the, for, the, for the Kenyan user group, one of the things that we've really been intentional on doing as part of, I think, community building and addressing the needs of uh, every, every uh, individual is plugging into rooms, especially in the CSO space. So you find that there's a conversation around women in the digital space. They don't know maybe much about Wikimedia, so even there's a community. But then we're like, oh, do you guys know that um, actually we are working towards shrinking uh, gaps on, on women and all, then get them in that room. So I've seen uh, uh, partnerships, collaborations, or even trainings where females have been invited, not necessarily because it's an editor per se, but it's a discussion at a national level and they are having those spaces. So when some, a random person out there sees like there's a place they belong, there's a place that is pushing something and there's a place that is adding value to them, then they will come. But if we only limit it to, okay, I'm doing an editathon, uh, how many pages did you edit? I think we, we water it down. So I think it's one of the things that I've seen that is making the difference in making the space more meaningful. Actually, hearing yeah, about your experiences is really inspiring. But I guess it comes to what's its own fair of challenges, right? So what does it feel like being a female leader in this movement? What has been some of the challenges that you faced as leaders in this movement? Anyone? The challenges, I would say, it's self-doubt. Self-doubt, I think, is the, the stereotype that encompasses just being a woman and actually being both going and trying to. For instance, if you try publishing publish with other stakeholders and try to see if they can help you, sometimes I'm like, oh, maybe I should look for a male representative to go and strangely <laughs> have a back here. On some, um, if we are holding like a training or something, and I'm trying to facilitate the training to see if they can be on board. So it's held out, of course, and um, yeah, mostly I'll also say that's the only thing that comes into mind. <laughs> but um, I think it's very important because I, either way, when I come up with those kind of like a self doubt. Uh, feeling, I actually take the, the initiative to be brave and I've always had like a good community. I would say, um, I would ask a lot and like reference or even ask, for instance, I have good friends in the community, that helps. It's great motivation to have like good um, relationship and network within the community. Um, I would ask maybe my friends from Rwanda or Uganda, I would ask my friend in Zambia, we had enough so that they help my friends from Nigeria. How do you guys do this so that I can actually build momentum to do anything for them? They will actually influence me to actually go forward and actually do things. And today I'm actually leading a community where we actually have general support to do like a series of events and it has actually helped our community to be stable. Um, we, we're still trying to build up, but I feel like we are in the right path. And um, it's not like a haphazard itself, so let's see haphazard, but it wasn't those irregular rapid cards that we used to have in the past where it was just once in a while, in a year, and then it's gone. So with that being said, um, we, uh, yes, I've, I've actually, I'll say I've tried my best to actually overcome those feelings of being um, doubtful and uh, going to the for partnership with Anyone else want to say? On that topic. Oh, challenges, awesome. Challenges, or how it just feels like being a people leader in this movement. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'd like to 
share some of the challenges that we face in our user group in Kenya. And um, most of the time, like we say, um, we find that uh, people have an eight to five job. So trying to balance between work and volunteering and raising a family is very hard. So that's one of the challenges. And also another challenge we face is that when we are holding or when you are having campaigns, sometimes people don't show up. You plan for an editathon and you find yourself in the space alone, in the Zoom meeting alone, what do you do? So that's a big challenge. And we faced that uh, with Carol. Uh, when we were doing, we actually got a, a, a fellowship with Code for Africa um, where we were, she was working on climate change and I was doing politics together with a colleague from Kenya and uh, it was a big challenge for us. So people were not showing up. But when you are holding like big events, people want to be part of that, but they don't want to put in work by, behind the scene. Yeah. I mentioned earlier that we trained the youth to gain some form of skills and do um, volunteering. And um, the challenge has been university, uh, university graduates uh, looking forward to paid jobs and then you tell them to volunteer their skills or their time without getting any form of earnings. But then, um, what we've uh, done now is, we tell them the truth. This is my story. I graduated this year, and this is how far I've come being a part of this movement. It might not be the same for you, but then there's something that you might learn, because look at the diverse people we have within the movement. They have a story. So maybe you could try, give it a chance. If it's not going well, you are free to back out. And then I think it's, it's picking up bit by bit. Um, we have our team members joining other places. And our founders are a good example. They started somewhere and now we can point them mostly Zita, Sadiq. So they are inspired and then they keep being a part. So, yeah. uh, yes, just to share a bit more, I think I, I spoke from a leadership <laughs> point of view. Um, I think also some of the challenges that, that we have is the misconceptions that we have about Wikipedia. When we try and do trainings with schools or universities, they're like, really, are you sure about that? Is it really level information that we get there? And we really do try to um, explain to them that yes, it is reliable. Yes, we do have people who pilot these articles and yes, they actually get deleted like, instantly when information is wrong. Um, so I think that is another challenge that we're trying to actually do. So I think, yeah, maybe the, the, the remedy of that will be more conveyed and actually sharing more information with that people like to trust Wikipedia. Um, yes, but yeah, I think that, that comes at the top of my head right now. Um, for me, I think I would like to talk about how it has worked for me, despite the many challenges. Um, being in a space, I remember, I don't think I forget the Wiki Loves Women Focus Group. It keeps us going years later to be able to provide leadership and training for us. And um, I know that is where I run home when I have a, a very small issue. There is a space for me uh, as a leader to be able to get support. So uh, I think it has also, that is my, my best example, having been in a women group that is supporting me as a leader for my community. So that is how I would say I have been able now to navigate with, I think the smallest issue, we are able to bring it up to the Wiki Labs Women Focus Group and immediately you get a solution. So there is that space of knowing that no matter what, I don't need to pressure myself uh, trying to navigate. There is somewhere I go for help. I will also go to my fellow East Africans for help. They're always there to, to assist us, to tell us you can do it and you're going to be able to navigate the space. Thank you very much. I didn't know there was a group where women just meet conventional women where you just can talk and inspire. <laughs> and inspire to the interesting. Amazing work, amazing work. Okay, good. So, how many of you are female leaders in the audience? Can you show my hands? Female leaders. Ayla, you're not a female leader. 
Llevamos cinco días. Well, would you mind sharing like what in what in this uh, panel has been said so far that resonates with you as a leader in your community? So I was saying, what have they said so far that resonates with you? Or what have been your own challenges as a leader in uh, Rwanda? Yes, uh, thank you so much. Maybe before we say challenges, I will say opportunities. But uh, uh, maybe there's a Rwanda. Um, I can say that it was so easy for me to join the movement and navigate. Uh, 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 many things, as you said, also we are out of cards in the movement, and uh, we made uh, 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 new initiatives and also community growth initiatives. But one of the things I really appreciate in this program is support, support which is really natural. No, no one has seen someone to support that. If I click on and you just reach with someone elsewhere, it's ready to support and train and also give his time or her time. And I've been seeing many support. Like men are really supportive men. Oh, on my view, maybe I don't know. Others have been seeing men from South Africa supporting us, men in Rwanda. So it is also a good thing if they're really taking this serious and intentionally trying to support uh, women and put their work forward. And especially when the movement really does so. Um, but the challenge has been always taking a family, um, family matters like having babies and then you need to sit on the internet or go to something, gather the community, uh, you find that like, you don't have enough contribution like others. You will train people one day and then the next week they will be having a lot of contribution and they will feel guilty like, I'm not doing anything. Like, I have no article, I have no, I'm not uploading photos, but you see, before it used to be like, okay, why, why am I not, I'm not, so, I'm not uh, so active, like, I feel like I'm not active, maybe, I think I'm slow. But after discussing with people around, uh, I came to discover that, no, I'm not doing bad. The people who I'm training, I'm really putting together, uh, I'm sharing initiatives, are doing great because I supported. So that was used to be the challenge, and I feel now, now uh, we are putting forward to include our newbies, community members who have been with these four years. I joined the movement the same as uh, Winnie and Derek last four years. But now most of activities, most of the uh, initiatives are being done by women in our community. We, we are really trying to do 30% affirmative action for women. We are so serious about this. You know, we, are, we don't have more women yet in the community because in Rwanda, men are really active, but in the first thing is that is really working. So, um, I would say that, yeah, challenge, as I can say, are really this than opportunities. Opportunities are more. Thank you. Rosie, I saw your hand as well, so bring it to you. I feel like I had a photo just pop up on my phone of you and me in 2017. <laughs> When the young lady at the far, far, my far right said, um, just hit my heart, you said, but what is the impact? And what I want to say to you, to all of you, is that impact is not easily measured, especially at first. When I started editing Wikipedia, I thought I was writing in a vacuum. No one wrote anything to me to my, about my articles, no messages, no nothing. It didn't matter. I enjoyed what I was doing. That's why I was doing it. But the point is that there was an impact. The impact only showed itself later. And so I would say to you, don't stop. Keep doing whatever it is you're doing. 
Because even though the impact might not be measurable today, you might not be able to see it today, everyone you touch with the words you do, the campaigns you start, the edit-a-thon that you try to have and very few people show up, it, um, it rolls over and it will continue to impact people's lives. The next door neighbor who you speak to and you say, I did this, and they'll remember it. And then maybe they'll get involved five years later, ten years later. Hopefully it's a long life. Don't stop. You'll see the impact later. I, in my heart, I believe this. You'll see the impact maybe later. It doesn't have to be measurable today. Thank you very much, Ruthie. Don't worry about today, look towards the future. Because that's where the impact actually comes from. So, I have been hearing a lot about inclusion, right? I hear that when I speak to my fellow colleagues, we want to be included in spaces. Where can we draw? But, most of the times I think about it, and I think about it, I think from a man's perspective. Today I want you to share your own perspective as ladies, what you actually mean by inclusivity in this moment, and which spaces you want or you envisage yourself to be in in the next two, three, four, five years to come. Uh, when we're talking about inclusion, we, what we want is to be we don't want to be on the menu. We don't want to be on the table. We want to take part in every role. Whatever Phyllis can do, Terry can do even much better. That's what we want. <laughs> so just to add to that, um, for me, inclusion will be making me aware that this is what is going on. So I love the fact that the African agenda or the discussion actually involved women. So it wasn't just some men sitting there, but they were made, they were invited. And if you provide it, like you share some form of invitation, then I can take part. But if you don't invite, maybe I'll force myself in. But then, it feels some way to force yourself in than to be invited, yes. So um, invitation to decision making, I could have a sit there and then listen to you, and then my input can be valuable. So um, invitation would be great. And decision-making, yeah. Correct me, so what does inclusion look like? Um, for me, inclusion looks like um, everyone having, I think, each one of us, like different kinds, <laughs> anyone had just having a seat at the table, but with competence, I would say, let it be valuable, it should be somebody who actually has the right heart or has the right um, skills to actually bring the best impact out of um, what's being communicated there. So it's, I think for me, it's not just about having a seat, but actually bringing something to the table as well. Yeah, yeah so uh, the advocates in me <laughs> will make this very general. Um, I think other than just creating that space at the table, I think for me what this female inclusion in, in leadership means in the movement is going, being intentional about going beyond just serving the gender quota. Like just because for example, this is an example, let's say we from the Wiki Nava Steering Committee, uh, let's say uh, out of, they have eight um, committee members and seven of those are male. So just because we make it three, three, female and male, it's not enough for me. But it's what, what as Penny said, the competencies, the impact, and also what are the, what are the other, the deeper roles that we want to see this gender diversity bring up? Because then if that's not um, being served, then I think we are eroding that bit. And I think, um, I also say that because we also live in a world where, especially for, for the leaders, as a female leader, you look up to other leaders, how they show up in, 
their spaces, it works, inspires you to be that person you want to be. So I think we have to see the females who are taking leadership in the movement showing up the way we want them to show up for it to mean something. Here. Um, I think I would say, I would echo my fellow ladies, it's not all about um, showing up and yeah, it's, we're supposed to have uh, one female, what will be her contribution, what will be her role, how passionate is that person. So we want also um, what Terry has said, not just of being on the table, let us be given those roles and people to believe in us that we can spearhead, we can take it to the next level. Um, about keeping those rules, you, I, I could ask you a question. Um, you could pinpoint a Wikimedia, a female Wikimedia, that you feel like this person has this qualities and this, but it's not being present. You are presenting that opportunity for them to be there. In a way, you have been including them, rather than just closing your eyes and acting like this person is not there, but you are well aware this person is more than capable to um, add something to the table. That is you making them included as well. So um, basically hearing words like invitation can also be inclusivity. Giving us the space, creating the awareness that this exists can actually invite us into that space and make sure, uh, make sure that our presence and our skill sets are being used. I also hear competence, like just not putting women there because we need a quota of women at the table, but women that have the skill set to actually contribute to whatever discussions are happening there. And then I heard as well that women actually have the skill set and women can do better than what some of we, the men, are actually doing. So let's invite them, and let's bring them into the spaces and motivate them to contribute uh, to leadership within the multimedia movement. Now, I think I have asked you guys a lot of questions. But I believe there are also lingering questions on your mind about some of the things that you've seen in the movement. But well, before I come to this question, let me go to this. Since you mentioned it was called, right? And we are in an African conference, right? And some of these conversations are happening and are very apparent to where we want to go as the African community. The question I want to ask you is, not just you, but <laughs> is, what are some of the current initiatives or projects or programs that are happening in the African continent that you feel that women must be more present in? And how can we bring women into those spaces to ensure that the race that we just spoke about? Yeah, okay. Um, I would say that um, the movement in Africa is growing, and as it grows, the region is also moving from just looking, being concerned with community issues to regional, global issues. So we are looking now at the uh, movement chapter. Like one of the uh, conversations right now is um, hubs um, also. Like now, when we talk about these hubs, when we talk about the movement chapter, are we having enough representation uh, from not just uh, women per se, but also enabling uh, participation in these conversations? When we talk about also resources and other things, um, are we also empowering? Yes, we have communities that have come up that are led by women, but are we empowering them to engage in these global, now beyond the local level? So I think as we as we now look into uh, the bigger picture, it's now how we become intentional about saying, yes, we have um, uh, females who are capable, but how again do we also uh, empower and show them, okay, now let's, let's, let's push it up now to these other spaces and, and see how we can make it back in that area as well. Uh, yes, thank you for this question. Um, as Winnie said, I think perhaps yes, they are very important for people to, for women actually to be a part of and be part of the decision making uh, um, committee or groups. 
And also I think proof that um, would be good for women to actually be grounded in would be the big to have mentorship and uh, focus groups and also not kind of like um, aligning it only to women but because we're trying to build a community that is involving men and women so I think the next generation is important to actually tap into. I'm a, I'm a very strong world person who likes to involve everyone um, so I like diversity and inclusion for male and female. So I feel when it comes to like projects, don't just um, do the gender gap alone um, because they will be guys who like to be um, wiki loves Africa, or they like um, wiki comments, they like some would like um, to do wiki voyage. So I think it's a really good to have an encompass or wide range of skill set um, when you do projects so that the, the world is changing and there are a lot of trends that are happening every day and you could actually build interest for whoever is coming to your community so that they know what way they can align themselves. As I said, for me, my community is very um, interesting on how um, they're really split apart when it comes to projects. So what's the best way to retain them? See what, where, which area um, would be best to be aligned with somebody's interests. So it's good to maybe, as for instance me as a female leader, to be well equipped um, with my skill set and see, okay, fine, let me be best and learn um, all these key or all these sister projects that we have in Wikipedia. Um, and then I could relate that and champion it to my community. So I'm told we, we need to wrap up. But before we go, I just want to give, like, So um, we've been told to wrap up, and I just wanted to give anyone in the audience who wants to ask these female leaders in our communities any question, anything that's happening, anything they've heard that they want to promote before we go to the close. Um, so, um, thank you very much for having me here. Um, I'm Sharon Kuhn, I'm a Senior Leader for Fighting Against All now I'm talking about Patriarchy in general. It has kept women in the in the home states, but now they are doing a great job in their communities and the global movement at large. My question is: now that you've seen, uh, you've been, you've uh, established communities and they are doing so good. Uh, what are you doing to bring members of all board? Because as we talk about gender gap, it's not only about women. It's also about bridging the gaps where men are left behind. So what exactly are you doing to also bring men on board? Because from discussions you've just realized when you bring both on board, the impacts become bigger. Thank you. So for me, uh, earlier this year we had a session on Uja Africa with Masana Moloti where she highlighted that uh, you know, there has been a problem with you on grants related to gender gap. So, I mean, are you guys feeling any impact so far, or is this something reserved for next day? Anyone to take any questions before? Um, Derek's question. Um, so, reminds me of Helen Keller's quote about alone we can do um, small, but together we can do much. And so, for um, your question, I think we should involve them through our project. So, a themed uh, focus. So this time around we are working on women artists and it's not just a female that can create it, you could be part of that um, activity in creating that as well. And also when we are conscientizing the females, we should involve them in the discussions that hey, you are also part of the problem in a way, so this is how you are contributing to this and then maybe you could um, be more friendly in this or be inviting or reach out to someone and help in this area. So that's my comments. Okay, we'll briefly follow up. Uh, also, to answer your query, question, uh, Derek, I think um, we are not saying that um, by empowering women or making these spaces more meaningful for women, we are excluding the men. We are just tapping into a space again to fill a gap that exists 
like yes, women have been existing um, uh, and taking up lower roles, but now it's more of enabling the female leadership. That doesn't mean, for example, uh, for the Kenyan user group, for example, just because it's all female co-founded and then there are no men members. It's just that, uh, it's just shifting the gear to say, we don't have to wait. I could have waited, as Candy was saying, sometimes when you struggle with that, I don't know, if the confidence. I could have waited and say, okay, maybe I need to go and look for, because, <laughs> yeah, Wikimedia is the Uganda, so the, um, and, uh, Douglas, and so I saw Anton, actually the person who mentored me was a male. I could have said, okay, I need to go look for a man to start this, but it's just, like trying to show women that they can be more than, and I think it's, it's also addressing the societal issues that we see. We look at also things like even the political space, and you see it's largely male dominated. So for us, it's being also intentional to the picture that we are sending outside the Wikimedia movement to show females that you can be in that space and be at the helm. You don't always to be the people who start here at the bottom. When you're in that office, you could be start as the CEO. You don't have to start as a teacher. So I think that's what we are saying. Just showing that female leadership can be a thing. It's the thing can be what you're looking at. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Willy. Uh, thank you all, my panelists, for sharing your insights. It's been very insightful. Learned a lot. We'll take it back home and work on that. Please a round of applause for my speaker.